and welcome to Gen Z Reviews. I'm your host, Sam, and today I'm going to be unboxing, reviewing, and demonstrating to the best of my abilities this Yugi M708 pen tablet. Now, I saw this the other day on Amazon for $58.99, and I couldn't really pass it up. I figured for $60, how... How bad could it really be? Uh, now I've never used anything like this, so please excuse my um, ignorance, if you will. But all this stuff that you see on top here was taped to the outside. I have never once opened this. You can still see the. Oops. Okay, let me pick up where I dropped off my little container here. Maybe that was a sign that I should talk about this first. In this little container that was taped to the outside, it was actually taped right over here. In this little container, they provide you with a little adapter. Come on. There we go. It is a standard A to micro USB and they also provide another adapter that is also a standard A to a USB-C. Also they provide a little half glove that covers just the pinky and ring finger it goes around the wrist. They also provide a little brush. Now, I'm not entirely sure what the brush is for. Um, I suppose it could be for dusting the device, but I suppose we'll find out once we get it open. And they also provide a little microfiber cloth. Now that we can move this off to the side. Let's look at the box. That's the front and the back. Now you can see here they have a little QR code which gives you your user's manual so I'm taking a guess that there will not be a physical user's manual within the box but I suppose we'll also find out when we open it up. So I have my little trusty dusty phone here. We're just gonna scan the user's manual. If you haven't learned by now, anytime I say we, it's usually me and the mouse in my pocket. Maybe I should get a little mouse to put in my videos. It'll be, that, that'll, that'll be we. So, it's just loading the user's manual here. Please don't mind my dirty phone screen. Ta-da! There's your user's manual. You can scroll through, and this has 83 pages. I'm not sure how well you can see that up in the corner there. It has 83 pages. Oops. And this just has all the information of the device itself. Um, I suppose if there's, I'll look through this and if there's anything uh, important that I feel should be shown, I will do so in editing. In the meantime, let's get this puppy open. a little sticker here that also seals the box. Ah, and they should they provide a little sticker right on the bag on the outside. Please download the latest driver from the Yugi official website and then they provide the website. So you do need uh, drivers to use this thing with your laptop, computer, whatever you use. And then, I don't really have much room, so we're going to put this down right there. And I'm going to gently put the box back on top. Inside, there is a little baggie here. I can see kind of through it that, I, that there is a warranty card. So there's your warranty card with your user information. There is also the warranty policy in there. I don't know how well you can see this. 
There we go. More information. And then just their contact on the bottom there. So they do also provide that's my bag, a little quick guide. So that's nice if you don't have the uh, if you're not able to scan the QR code to get the user guide online, they do provide a solid copy, which is nice. What else is in here? Oh, look at that. They provide another glove. So you have two in case you lose one or one gets damaged. That's nice. And... The pen itself. I feel like a banana white just showing it off. They also provide you with a standard A to micro USB power cable. And there is one little stand. So I suppose you could put the pen either way, like this on the stand. It's kind of hard because they wearing black gloves. Or you can just stand it in there thusly and have it wiggle around. They also provide this, but I'm not sure what this is for. I guess we'll find out. It's got kind of like a rubber bottom, so I guess like for, obviously for non-slip. I don't think the pen goes in there. Oh, I'm an idiot. <laughs> they give you extra tips. So in case uh, the one on there breaks or something happens to it, they do provide you with extra tips, which is actually really cool. That's really nice. Is that? Oh, they go together. Look at that. We're learning together, guys. And I believe that's it for the box. I am going to lift this up to make sure there's nothing underneath. No, there is not. So I'm going to put this to the side. This is going to be loud. I'm also just going to toss these little plastic baggies here. And I probably should have put these back in the box, but I'm just going to put them to the side. Now let's get the tablet itself opened up. If I can. There we go. And there it is. So there's, there's a little screen protector here. I'm not sure if there's going to be anything that shows up here. Maybe it's just um, the way it's designed that doesn't get scratched up or damaged. These are your buttons. Um, I'll have to double check and see what each of the buttons do. But when I do find out, I will let you know. And then this is obviously the tablet itself where you draw. So because there are drivers that need to be installed before this is used, I'm going to go ahead and do that on my super duper potato laptop and uh, I'll be right back when that's done. I'm back. I've got the driver downloaded for the pen tablets. Um, however, when I did go to the website, you do have the option to either search for whatever tablet or pen tablet you have. Or, if you have an older model, you just scroll on down here to other models and that'll give you the option to download the driver for your older model of tablet. So, scroll down. And here you have the software drivers. They offer Windows 7, 8, and 10. They also offer uh, Mac 10.15 or 10.15. I don't have a Mac, so I don't know how the software works for that. 
they also offer 10.10 and 10.14. Now, I have paint.net open. We're going to grab our, ta our little pen. And, oh, actually, before we do anything, they do have a little screen protector on here. I know some people find that satisfying. We have one over the buttons and one over this little section over here. Still not quite sure what this little spot is for. I also have on the little half glove. It's kind of like a, um, gosh, I can't think of the fabric, like a plasticky kind of rayon or spandex. That's what it feels like. Um, it's also not the greatest fit. It's kind of big on my fingers. I also have kind of small fingers, small hands. So it's okay. It fits. It works. Now, over here, your buttons, I believe in order, actually, I think I have... Do I have, I do not have Amazon pulled up. That's where I purchased it from. Um, I believe that this is, okay, this is your zoom in. That's your zoom out. You can kind of see that. This is, okay, this is your brush to draw. This is, your eraser. It doesn't seem to be erasing anything though. This button, control alt. Not sure. Oh, okay. So it seems like the third, the second one from the bottom right here, not sure how well you can see it. This one right here is to save which is good to know. And this one, I'm not sure what this one's for. I didn't actually notice that until just now. Um, if you press on a button, this is actually a light here that tells you that that is, you are indeed pressing the button. So that's nice to know. Didn't notice that the first time. There are also buttons on the pen itself, but I'm not sure what it's supposed to do. Zoom in, zoom out. That's back to the pen or the paintbrush. And this is supposed to be the eraser, but it doesn't seem to be erasing anything. I'm not sure. It's a little confusing. I apologize. Um, like I said, I've never used anything like this. Um, and the buttons themselves are not labeled on the device, which I thought would be nice, but... I'm back. Um, as you can clearly tell, uh, my audio has changed. Uh, that's mainly because I brought this whole shebang over to my Windows 11 computer. I'm now recording this through OBS. Um, mainly because something didn't seem to work on my potato laptop. Uh, I did install the older version of the drivers because this is an older version of the tablet, drawing tablet, drawing writing tablet, however you want to word it. And it wasn't recognizing the the device. So I brought it over to my Windows 11 computer. I installed the version three drivers, and that seems to be working just great, as you can tell here. So now these are the pen shortcuts here. As you can see, I'll use the stylus. As you can see here, this is the device. That's the up key on the stylus, as you can see in the provided picture here. 
So right off the bat, the default is the pen and eraser, which I think I'll leave it as that because if this is meant to be for drawing or writing, um, obviously you're going to want a shortcut to get to your pen or your eraser. This is for right click and in thinking I might also leave that as right click, but you can also choose from any of the options you see here, you have shift, left alt, right alt, space, and control, and then all the different clicks that your mouse can do. Also, you can choose keyboard clicks. So whatever key you hit on your keyboard, so say I say I want space bar, space bar, space bar, yeah, space bar, just click OK. And now when I press the down key, uh, not that it's going to do anything here at the moment, but if you press the down key on the pen, it'll activate the space bar. You can also choose from the device. Uh, so you can switch monitor, switch pen and eraser, which I already have the up key set as. You have precision mode, B and E. I'm not sure what B and E is for. And then you can just do just eraser. So now if I press the down key, it should show the control panel, but that's probably what this is, the control panel for the device. Then we can go to pen pressure settings. And here is where you can see how much pressure you need to use or how much pressure you are using. And then you can grab this and make it softer. So it takes a lot less pressure or you can make it harder so it takes a lot more pressure still not a lot of pressure but still quite a bit to do what needs to be done now we're going to go over to the digital drawing tablet and for here you can see that you can choose full screen so you can do anything on the entire screen here or you can set a specific area and for the tablet, you can do the same thing. You can set the tablet area. You can use the full tablet and then you have tablet proportions. So it'll only go to the proportions of the tablet, which I guess seem to be the same size as my monitor because I can still go all the way to the edge of my monitor using the tablet. And then we have shortcut keys. So this corresponds to these keys on the side here, which is what I was having a problem with figuring out earlier. They didn't seem to be doing anything. That's because I didn't have this to set those keys. So we can click here, mouse control. You can leave that as left click or whatever you want. Um, what did I have? Yeah. So I think I'm gonna leave that as left click and then K2, which is the one below it. We can make, we'll do shift just for argument's sake. And then K3, again, the one below that is for alt. And then K4 is for space. You can always change that. K5, which is just below this, what it, I recently found out is actually a light. That's K5 right there. That's set to control Z. This one is K6 is control plus plus. Uh, not entirely sure what control plus plus does, but you can set that to whatever you want. And then K7 is control plus minus. And then K8 is to is for the device and it shows the control panel, which I'm guessing is this here. Here we have this. I'm not quite sure what that does. There's this that doesn't do anything. If you hit the plus here, you can select uh, running applications. And then here you have your settings. You can calibrate your monitor. You can show display number. Then you have rotation settings. 0 degrees, 90, 180, and 270. 
And then here we have, you can, you can disable the shortcut keys if you don't want them. Disable message. I'm not sure what it means by message. Disable pressure. So um, it won't show you the pressure or there just won't be any pressure. And you can disable tilt. Again, I don't know what it means by tilt. Um, not seeing much of that around here. Oh, also, you do have Windows Ink, which I believe uh, for the mouse is just supposed to be like the default speed or whatever you have set uh, for your mouse through your computer. Or you can choose the mouse mode through the tablet. You can make it super fast or... You can make it, if I can grab it, really slow. So it all depends on how you work and what feels comfortable for you. Go back to the settings here. You can also import configuration, export configuration, and you can choose a diagnostic tool. So if you have a, a configuration, I guess, from um, an earlier tablet or just a different drawing tablet, drawing writing tablet, you can import those, you know, configuration settings to this one. You can export these settings to use them uh, with a different drawing or writing tablet from this brand. And then your diagnostic tool, you can see where the cursor is on the screen. You have the device name, the product, the system version is being used on the driver version and your configuration version. Okay. I took the time to go through the control panel and just go through all the settings, set up the shortcuts. Um, and as you can tell, I've got paint.net open in the background. And I'm just going to go through. I have these all set. As you can see, I have these assigned to uh, keyboard presses, um, mouse clicks. So we're just going to give this a little test and see what happens. So I'm actually going to lower my brush width a little bit. So, oops. So actually, since I just made a mistake, good time to show I have the K5 key mapped to control Z, which is undo. And then the down on the brush or pen. We'll switch us back to, should switch us back to pen. Mm, but it is not. Okay. So. We'll just switch back that way and so it's very easy to use. It does take a little bit of getting used to because it's it feels like you're writing with a pencil, like on a piece of paper, but it's just a little bit different. It takes a little bit of getting used to. Now, when the pen does get too far away from the tablet, you can see here it's a bit far away from the tablet or drawing pad, um, so it's not picking up anything. But as soon as you get close enough, it picks it up, and you can move around and do what you have to do. It should switch us back to eraser, but it's not, which is weird. Okay. So I'm going to grab the eraser and I'm going to make this super wide. And there's the eraser. And if you made a mistake, just control Z. Now I also have, this is our left click. So you can just click here and do what you have to do, or you can just put it down on the pad and do that. The second one I have is map to backspace. This is control shift Z, which should actually be. Hmm. That should be undo, because if you know what control shift Z is, 
Oh, that's redo, actually. My apologies. Control Shift Z is redo. So that should have been what that did, but it only picked up the Z in the button I pressed. So it zoomed in as opposed to doing what I have it mapped to. Um, this is mapped to the letter S, which is what gives us in paint.net the magic wand. So you can just select that and then delete, which is the lower button on the pen itself. And I'm actually going to zoom out a bit. I have the sixth button mapped to K, which in paint.net also gives you the eyedropper tool. Seven is mapped to S, which gives you the rectangle select. You can select whatever area you want and then just delete. And then eight gives you control panel, which I, I was of the belief that it would bring it to the front, but it did not. It just opened it up. And there you have it. This is a very simple review. There isn't very much to it, which is nice. But there you have it. The Yugi, ooh, oh, that's freaking out. <laughs> that was a bad idea. The Yugi drawing writing tablet pad. I think for the price of $60, it's, it's, it's great at what it does. It's good. It's easy to understand once you get the hang of it. Um, it's, it's good. It works for, it works great for artists or, um, say you have a child that likes to draw, um, give them this. You don't have to worry about <laughs> pens or pencils or crayons everywhere. You just hook it up to your computer and let them draw to their heart's content. I think for artists or, um, uh, anybody who's doing digital art animators, this is great. It's, it definitely, it works great. You don't have to look down at the tablet. You can see exactly what you're doing right on screen. Um, and it's just, it's very easy to understand and simple to use. And I do very much enjoy that it does come with the extra tips or nubs, nibs, whatever the heck you want to call them. I don't know if there's a technical term for them. I do like that it comes with extra ones in case the one you have in the pen breaks. So I think for $60, $58.99, it's, it, it does what it, what it's advertised quote unquote. And I think it works really well. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you found it helpful or useful, please give it a thumbs up. It always helps. Don't forget to share this video and subscribe. Uh, to get notified when I post a new video. Now for the disclaimer. I give my opinion on this product and it's just my opinion. I'm not an expert in the field of drawing tablets or tablets in general and other people's opinions may differ. To keep my reviews independent and free of conflicts of interest, my personal policies for reviews are this video receives no payment or other compensation for advertising. This video receives no payment or other compensation for reviews of products or services. If I did not pay full retail price for a product being reviewed, I will explicitly state that in the review. Unless explicitly stated, I have no affiliation or relationship with the supplier of a product being reviewed. However, any and all Amazon links are affiliate links. This channel does receive a small commission at no additional cost to you, the buyer. Acceptance of a free sample does not guarantee a favorable review. My rule of thumb is I'm not going to embarrass a supplier or product manufacturer or the retailer, but I will call out any scams or if it may seem as though it is. When I review a product, whether I like it or not, does not factor into my review. It is whether or not the product is useful, worth the cost, or it's of quality. Now, is this of quality? It feels very sturdy. It's quite heavy for what it is. It, it does not flex at all. At least it doesn't seem like it's flexing. I'm sure it does at least a little bit, but it does not feel like it flexes to a point where it could be detrimental to the product. The buttons are very clicky. It's quite nice. The pen itself, while very light, it, it works very well. The buttons are also very nice and clicky. 
I and I, I do like the fact that they do provide more tips in case something happens to the one that is already provided uh, in the pen itself. So I would say that this definitely is of quality. This definitely is a product of quality. Um, and need if need be, um, I will definitely do an update if something happens to it, if it breaks or something just goes wrong or it stops working. I will definitely do an update at some point if that happens. Thank you so much for watching. If you found this video useful or helpful, please give a like, share this video, and please be sure to subscribe to get notified of when I post a video. I hope to see you on the next one. Bye-bye!